The most efficient way to introduce operating procedures for BCS tractors is to start at the nose and work backward. So, starting with the engine, we recommend checking the engine oil level each day before starting work. To do so, level the tractor so that the bottom of the engine is parallel to the ground. Remove the plug dipstick on the left side, from the tiller operator's point of view, of the engine block. You should be able to see oil in the filler neck of the engine. If you do not, add SAE 10W40 oil to the top of the thread. Next, to explain the working of the clutch, lower the red operator presence control lever, squeeze the clutch lever, and then raise the clip on the front of the clutch lever to hold both levers in a depressed position. With this configuration, not only is the engine able to be started, but even if the operator accidentally left the wheels in gear or the attachment engaged, nothing will move because with the clutch squeeze, no power is transferred to the transmission. Most importantly, please remember that this position is for storage as well as for starting. By having the lever squeezed, the two cones in the clutch are separated by an air gap that prevents moisture from causing the cones to stick together. To prepare a PowerSafe model tractor for starting, the instructions are a bit more simple. Before starting the engine, simply turn the on-off switch on the handlebar to the on position. There is nothing required to do with either the OPC or clutch levers. Moving back from the engine to the transmission, check the dipstick that is located on the top cover of all models. Verify that the oil level is in the operating zone between the full and add marks. If oil is to be added, use 80 to 90 weight gear oil for models equipped with the cone clutch, and for all PowerSafe models, strictly use tractor hydraulic transmission oil. Now let's go over the operating procedures. The first step is to adjust the throttle lever to a three-quarter position, with the idle position being all the way down, and full speed all the way up. Open the fuel valve and set the choke to the full choke position. Pull the recoil starter rope slowly until you feel resistance. Let the rope retract, slowly pull out to the resistance point again, and then give the rope a short, firm pull. Once it fires, slide the carburetor lever back to the intermediate position at which it runs smoothly. It will take some minutes of running before the engine is sufficiently warm to turn the choke to the off position. Next, from the operator's position, lower the throttle to an idle speed. With the clutch squeezed, shift the wheels into first gear. You will need to maintain a light pressure on the wheel speed select rod in the direction in which you want it to go as you slowly release the clutch. Release the clutch fully and allow the tractor to move forward. Squeeze the clutch to stop and test reverse by engaging the reverser lever and releasing the clutch. With a shuttle type transmission, the reverse speed will always match the forward speed. It is very important to engage the wheels before engaging the attachment. So, with the wheels still in first gear, engage the PTO, using the same procedure as engaging the wheels. Release the clutch fully, move forward a few feet, stop, and engage the reverser. The resistance is a safety mechanism that prohibits the tines and reverse to be engaged at the same time. Now is a good time to mention that the PTO can always be disengaged without the use of the clutch. Moving on to the wheel speed selector, engage first gear. With the tiller, this is intended for seed bed preparation and power composting. In first gear, we have 20 revolutions of the tines per revolution of the wheel for maximum chopping action. Shift into second gear, and this is the speed for inter-row cultivation. The tine to wheel ratio is 10 to 1, perfect for removing weeds and creating a shallow dirt mulch on the surface without over-pulverizing the soil. Shift into third gear, the speed of which varies depending on the tractor model. Here, on model 853, third gear is a working speed, which can reach up to 2.7 miles per hour. Models 853, 852, and all PowerSafe models feature this third working speed, which is intended for mowing applications, not tilling. On non-PowerSafe models without a third working speed, there is a third transport speed. Here, on model 853, the transport speed is fourth gear, accessible only when the tractor's handlebars are in rear mount tilling mode. As you can see, use caution when engaging the transport speed, as it is to be used only in conjunction with either the BCS utility trailer or transport sulky, and can reach speeds of up to 8.5 miles per hour, too fast to safely walk behind. Now let's discuss the rear time tiller's depth control lever. Typically, the top two holes are intended for shallow cultivating in soft sand and loam soils. The third hole is usually the setting for the first two passes needed for seed bed preparation when tilling sod or hard ground. 
Consequently, that's where we recommend the depth control be set initially. The final stop on the tour is the handlebars. We'll start with the center lever for vertical height control. The easiest way to turn the tiller at the end of the row is to squeeze the clutch and drop the handles to a lower level, so that when the tiller is lifted out of the ground, the handles are still at waist height. Release the clutch and make the turn. Squeeze the clutch and raise the handles to the desired height. Then, with the clutch still depressed, squeeze the handlebar release lever under the right grip and swing the handlebars to one of its offset positions. This position will easily allow you to till the next pass without walking in the freshly tilled soil of the previous pass. To maximize comfort, we recommend shifting the handlebars to the left, since this is the location of the operator's presence control lever, and using one's right hand to keep the OPC lever depressed and to guide the tiller. If you also purchased, or anticipate purchasing, front mount attachments, pop out the shifting rods from the rod supports and test the 180 degree rotation of the handlebars. Then reconnect the shifting rods. In conclusion, please know that we welcome your feedback and questions. To contact us about the content of this short video, please call 888 224-4271 or email info at bcsamerica.com. Thank you.